Okay, so tell me I'm not the only judgy jerk out there because I know you've all seen those posts from your friends and family. We all have at least one person in our life that's put out there. Hey, guess what? I just finished my fifth book of the two months of quarantine, killing it. And you're like, you know what? Good for you. But see, inside you're like, <laughs> that's a week in my normal life. Hey fellow book nerds, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're hanging in there with quarantine. We're hopefully at the tail end of it. But if you're like me, quarantine hasn't really been too bad as far as like keeping yourself entertained because we have books and boy have I read a good amount. So when thinking about getting back into this and trying to figure out what video I wanted to do, I wanted to do a list. I didn't really want to talk about one book. I know I like doing lists more because I like giving out as many book recommendations as possible. And the one that came to my mind the quickest, believe it or not, was the books that made me cry. And I know it's like, why during quarantine and the way the world is right now, do we want to talk about sad books? But I think it's probably because all the other lists, I'd have to go through and choose books and kind of break them down. But this list, there's only five books that made me cry. So it's like, they came to my mind easily. I can roll with it. And you know, yes, they made me cry, but we can make this fun, you know? So let's get into this. So you're probably wondering why my crying list is so short, <laughs> like why it's only five books. That's because I run away from these. These are by far my lowest trope. I don't like anything that will wreck me. You know, when I read reviews and I see words like gut-wrenching or emotional or you'll never recover ever again. You know, when I see those triggering sentences or words, I'm out. I'm like, probably not for me. Or you know, when they kill one of the main characters, 100% I'm out no happily ever after I'm out you know I think it's probably because you know the real world is sad enough and you read books to kind of escape into another world you know give me an emotional ride but at the end I want the nice pretty bow on the package you know do whatever you want in the middle end it with the bow on the package and these some of these books they just don't do that or they do but they twist it with your soul a little bit and I'm just not a fan it's not something I like to keep reading all the time so hopefully this is the only books that make me cry I mean like I've accumulated five in over nine years of reading so it took that long so maybe in another nine years I'll have a part two but probably not because I shy away from them a lot more than I did when I started reading I was just like give me a good book so that's why some of these are older because of that. So the first book I wanna talk about is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. And on the crying scale, I would give it probably a two out of 10. Now the book itself is a five out of five, which that makes no sense because I just did the crying scale one out of 10, but then I rate my books one through five. Sorry, <laughs> but if you've seen my video, how I rate my books, that makes sense to you. But the book itself is literally my top five. It's one of the best of all time. I love it, but crying wise, I gave it a two and I have to put it on the lower list because it's not, it's an emotional book more of like you feel things, but you don't necessarily cry cry. It was just a scene at the end and I've never read her so I didn't know what her MO with characters was. And there's a scene at the end that just got me a little emotional, you know, like the tears were in the eyelids but they didn't necessarily fall down. It was that kind of crying. And I feel like I reacted more because of how much I felt the connection of the character Archer. So if you read this book and for whatever reason you don't feel that connection or like you like the book but you don't emotionally connect as much with that character, you might not feel the emotions at the end. And honestly, what happened at the end, it wasn't anything you haven't read before, but it was just because of this particular character. I felt it a little bit more, which caused the unshed tears, but there was emotion in me. You know, I wasn't completely heartless. So the next book I want to talk about on my crying scale is The Edge of Never by J.A. Redemsky. And you know, this book's very special because it goes all the way back to when I first started reading. And this was, I considered my first, my first favorite book of all time. It hasn't lost its title a little bit, but it's still up there. But that one made me cry more so because the book itself, the main character, the hero, the hero, sorry, you don't quite know his backstory and you're hinted at it and then it kind of all hits you like all the information comes out at once toward the very end 
and you know it's a you so saw it's a long book so you grow to love this character and then at the end it's just like here's this oh my gosh this like it kind of just comes out of nowhere and I the first time I read it I cried for a good chunk of it a good little bit and then you didn't breathe a little bit toward until toward the end but then going into the second time I knew what was coming so I'm like I'm not gonna cry I'm good I know exactly what to expect but there was one aspect of it I totally forgot existed and I'll just say not to spoil too much it was a letter written and I totally forgot it existed and so when I was reading the second time and that letter came I just lost it <laughs> like that that took me down so that's why I bumped it up a little bit more from the first book so going into number three on my list and of course it wouldn't be one of my lists without bringing in my girl LJ Shen and Broken Knight and I think a majority of you are looking at this and going yes finally I was hoping that would be on there or you expected it maybe you're a little surprised it's not higher it is smack in the middle and I give this book a solid six out of ten cries you know I put it over the halfway mark you know for crying it's still I would say from what I've seen from a lot of fans I didn't react as strongly as I feel like a lot of people did but it is also a little hard to make me cry I know some of you probably lost it big time on this book but some of us are just kind of dead inside hi how you doing but I get it I truly get it and for if you have not read this book and you want to feel the deep emotions I don't want to give too much away I would just say read the Sinners of Saint series first before you get into this. Even You don't have to at all to read it, but if you want to feel the emotion connection and the, you actually want a good cry, it won't hit you as much unless you go through the parents book first of Sinners and Saint. And then this is based on their children. I don't want to point out any particular books because it will give it away. This one's hard to really say why it's emotional because it was just a giant spoiler. But I think most of you have read this. You know why it's a spoiler, or you know why it's emotional, why we all cried. It hurt us. It sucks. I was not a fan of it, but I understand the choice LJ made with writing it. I get it. It was even kind of realistic. I don't like realist. <laughs> I don't like real overly realistic in my books, but it made sense. So yeah, it's a good cry. Okay, guys, we're getting to the big two and the ironic part about these last two is both of them have made me emotionally distraught more than any other fictional character ever and one of them I consider one of the best books slash series ever written and then the other I didn't really enjoy it wasn't it was decently written the story was decently told but I didn't find anything particular and I will probably never read either one of them well, I'm definitely never going to read the one I'm about to talk to again. It wasn't that good for me to read again, but the, it's the first one that has the question mark on it. So getting into number four on this list is the Keaton series by B.A. Wolf or Wolfie, because it's W-O-L-F-E, I never know. But the, I actually had to look this book up because it's been so long and I couldn't remember the title of it, but I'll never forget the story so I guess I mean she did her job I mean did I love it no but if I'm still thinking about it because of those emotions you succeeded as an author on the crying scale I would give this one an eight yep we're going high and I do realize I skipped two I did every even number oh well sorry <laughs> but it was a solid eight and to fully get the emotional experience of this series it's three books I really don't want to give too much away but basically it's about a girl who, but basically it's about a girl who had to run away cause she's pregnant and she falls into this tiny little town where she meets this guy there who kind of like takes her in and like his family kind of takes her in cause they feel so bad. And that's all I really will put, <laughs> will put, put it. But it had a twist that I really didn't see coming in book one and it was just really out of left field and this was before I did my homework and reviews because I probably would have stayed away from it but I just didn't see this twist coming and it was really 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 sad and I like it was the first the twist and I'm like wow this sucks but I didn't realize how much further it would go and that's when I was like I regret everything and it's one particular scene. I mean, like, it's sad for a good chunk of it, but it's there's one scene that got me so much 
because you don't had to read it once, not twice. You had to read the scene three effing times because it's three books and three different books on three different perspectives. And you had to read that scene in each book. So like you read it the first time and it killed me. But then reading it the second time from a different perspective, don't want to give too much, I'm sorry. That was terrible. That's the only word I could, it was just terrible. <laughs> And I don't think I've ever read a scene that hurt more than that. See, like my voice just quivered because it just sucked. <laughs> it sucked so much. It makes it, see, I have to laugh. I gotta laugh to fight it. And then the, by the third one, when I started to read it, I'm reading like how far back because the author, to go into the third book, she had to go back about like a month or so. So then it hit me. I'm like, <gasps> I'm gonna have to read that scene again, but from this person's perspective, can't we just be done with it? Like it was bad enough. So all I'll say is it's a hospital scene. And if you, if you read it, you might know specifically what hospital scene I'm talking about because it's the only one that gets repeated three times, but it's that particular hospital scene. It's just, it's awful. <laughs> it's just awful. Okay guys, we made it. Number one, the number one book that has made me cry more than any other fictional character in the history of fictional characters, TV, movies, books, I have never lost it harder, more violently in my life than to this story, than to this character. And as soon as I say the name, I think a good majority of people I know have read it. And if you read it, you'll probably, you might even not want, want to hear me talk about it because it just affects you that much. So much that I've been wanting to do its own book review because it's such a beautiful story. And it's one of the best books you will ever read, hands down. But I can't talk about it. Anytime I try to talk about it or even think about it, I lose it. I've cried myself to sleep multiple nights. I'll just randomly laying in bed and I'll think about it and then you can't turn it off. And then the next thing you know, I'm crying myself to sleep. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, how do you explain this to people? <laughs> that two years after reading a book, you're still losing it over a character or slash story, you know? But it happens. It, I, I'm going to hopefully get through this without losing it. Let's see if I can do this. And number one on this list is The Boy and His Ribbon series by Pepper Winter. Guys, mm, if you haven't read it, I will 100% say, and this goes against all my gut-wrenching emotional instincts, read it. Just, I'm warning you, obviously, to buckle in and get the tissues and hold on. <laughs> have a loved one. I didn't have a loved one. I read this one on my own. I literally finished it, got into the shower, and sat on the floor and cried in a fetal position. <laughs> Me at my vulnerable times. But it's true. <laughs> It was really, really bad. I couldn't even finish reading the book for like the last couple of, last probably five chapters because I was crying so hard. I couldn't see the words and I kept it. I'm like, I just want to finish. I want it done. Like you just, I plowed through because I'm like, I just need this out of my life. But funny, funny me, it will never leave my life ever. And it's a ten, it is a 10 out of 10, obviously out of the crying scale. It's 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100, whatever you want to call it. It's it is the creme of the crop for me when it comes to emotional books. Gah, I'm, again, I'll talk about, let's see if I can talk about this a little bit. So it's a very different story. It's about a boy named Ren. It starts off when he's 10 years old and he's in a foster care situation that's very, very bad. And he runs away and he, unknown to him when he ran away, the daughter of the foster care family, Della, who was only one, was in his backpack. So the book is kind of like this journey or this series, I should say, it's kind of this journey of the two of them kind of living off the land and traveling and just growing up together. You know, he's 10 years older. So obviously as they get older, it becomes the lines become a little more blurred because he's kind of like a brother slash father figure because he raised her from when she's one years old. But, you know, she's also a woman and has her own feelings, but things change. <laughs> <laughs> and something happens and that something sucks and damn you pepper winters <laughs> you know like it's it's a it's a tough feeling because I would never would want I would never take reading the book back from my memory 
because it was genuinely one of the best stories I've ever read. It's one of the most, it's probably the most unique story I've ever read. There's nothing like that out there, nothing. But part of me is like, I will always have that deeply seated, gutted emotion in me and the ability to cry at the drop of a hat thinking about it that is still always will be in me and because of that book that was the last deeply emotional book I've read because of that I've learned that's where I learned my lesson to never read a gut-wrenching book but literally because of that series I'm like nope never again because of what happens in that book and just the story overall I'm like nope I'm done so it's weird to say go ahead and read it but you'll never probably ever be the same again. So this one I would also highly recommend. Please trust me, you know, I'm the queen of spoilers. Don't spoil it, just do it. Just go in and do it and regret it. You know, <laughs> like you won't regret it, but you'll regret it kind of thing. But that's it guys, my top five of books that made me cry. Hopefully again, there will never be another one of these because I don't want to get back into those <laughs> just thinking about them again got is starting to like get me emotional so i think i'm gonna go heat up a bowl of soup and cry over that but until next time happy reading keep reading those books during quarantine share if you read anything groundbreaking anything new there are some books guys have noticed coming out that are based off the whole coronavirus scheme which props to those authors who claps like this props to those authors for pumping out books that quickly but if anyone's read any of those i'm curious I'm not against reading anything about COVID. Some people are like, I don't want to do it when I'm living it. I'm not one of those people. I'll do it if it's a good story. So if you're ready in any of those, recommend them down in the comments. But I will see you guys next time in my next video. Bye.